Red Bull Rant is an uncensored and unedited podcast. The views expressed in this show are personal and do not reflect the views of others or any affiliated organizations. Hey guys, how you doing? This is professional wrestler Cole Cabana. Yes, I did play Division One A football, but when I go to England and I tell them I played football, they're all impressed because they think it's soccer. You're listening to the Red Bull Rant. Have a good time. Gray skies are gonna clear up, put on a happy face. Rush off the clouds and cheer up, put on a happy face. Take off the gloomy mask of tragedy, not your style. You look so good that you'll be glad you decided to smile. Pick out a pleasant outlook, stick out that noble chin. Why Wipe off that full of dumb luck, slap on a happy grin, and spread sunshine all over the place. Just put on a happy face. Welcome to the Red Bull Ranch. I'm Jason Ipico. I'm Pat McDonald. I'm Truman, and this is episode 51. What out of two ain't bad? <laughs> Uh, so, recording this episode, uh, as you guys are obviously aware, not on Thursday night. Uh, unfortunately, our schedule could not accommodate the Thursday show this week. Uh, we will back to our regularly scheduled show next week, and with a very, very special guest, which we will announce at the end of this episode. So, make sure to tune into the whole episode to hear that. Haha, you have to listen to the whole show. <laughs> yeah, it's just for you guys. <laughs> Alright, so, before we get to... Uh, New York going north of the border. Let's talk about the game on Friday that our one and only Pat McDonald flew out to Denver for Woo-hoo. the snow game of the century, I, snow cl- snow classico, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> the United States stay, taking on uh, Costa Rica in a game that might be replayed if FIFA is fucking stupid enough to allow Costa Rica's uh, petition to go through. <laughs> Not going to happen. <clears throat> No. no, probably not, but yeah. we've seen worse decisions out of FIFA, so it's possible. Yeah. Well, apparently it was. Uh, right. I, I saw something on Twitter. Clint Dempsey said that the captain has to make an official uh, protest at the end of the game for the whole process to be even valid, So, and he didn't do it. So from that alone, it sounds like it wouldn't happen. But yeah. All right, so Pat, since you were there, what, what was it like being at that game? It was amazing. I mean, it's it's easily one of my top sports moments uh, in, in attendance in my entire life. Maybe it's one or two. Uh, I mean, I guess because they won, I have to put it one, two being the Gold Cup loss, which was a disaster in 2009, but just the atmosphere of that game was that amazing. But, um, no, it was great. I mean, it, it's, it's funny because we saw when both Columbus and Casey hosted uh, their qualifiers in the last round, Everyone marked how the fans never sat down, stayed alive the entire game, and that was the exact same thing in Denver. Nobody sat down. Maybe a few people did it a half, but that was about it. Everyone stayed alive. Uh, it, it was cold, but it wasn't it wasn't that bad. Uh, I mean, I layered up enough that I was able to survive it. Uh, my feet were soaking wet, though, by the end of the game, and uh, my shoes didn't dry out for, like, two days. It was... Uh, that so, but uh, it, it it's really hard to describe how amazing it was to be there. And uh, Dick's Sporting Goods Park, not a bad place to watch a game, gotta say. Um, it's it, it's just a, I mean, I wish I could properly convey to people how amazing it was, but it was truly an epic experience. And ah, I'm so I'm so glad I'm going to be one of those people who say, "Yep, I was there." Yeah, I gotta admit, it looked. I, I mean, I at times there were trouble seeing the lines on the field, but you know, snow is just gonna happen. Mm-hmm. But it, it looked it looked like a fun atmosphere. It kind of would have been nice to be there, but that couldn't afford to tra- travel to Denver for this game, so I'm not really. Uh, I I lucked out, and then I had Jet Blue points that gave me a free a round trip, so that's the only reason I was able to even go. So. <laughs> Well, there you Thank go. Thank God we scored early in that game because if we didn't score early, <laughs> that would have been a nil-nil draw right there. Because oh my God, wow, yeah. those conditions got horrible. I mean, yeah, they got bad fast. Um, but yeah, it was, 
It was good. I mean, they, the U.S., uh, even like, it was funny, because even when Eddie Johnson came on, there was like, what, you know, three, four inches of snow on the ground. I mean, he, he was starting to move around, and like, nifty a little bit, and I was kind of like, huh, all right, DJ, that's pretty cool, but, um, yeah, no, it's definitely good. I mean, and that's another, going back to the protest, I mean, Chris Rick is all like, oh, we would have won if it wasn't so bad. And it's like, no, because the U.S. was bossing them around the field before the conditions got really bad anyway. Yeah, and then everyone said that the Costa Rican players wanted to continue playing the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So don't don't come out and say we want to, you know, we want to continue playing and then complain afterwards. Exactly, exactly. Here's a question. What do you guys think of... Uh the news I heard of today, the Costa Rica fans are going to turn their back during the CONCACAF Anthem, uh, or FIFA Anthem, whatever it is that's, that gets played, because of the shit that went down in uh, Denver. Ooh, that'll show them. Knock yourself out. Oh, man. That <laughs> is, ooh, boy. Man, that's really going to teach, you know, FIFA and CONCACAF a lesson. You know that CONCACAF Anthem is something that goes down in uh, history as one of the most classic and revered songs throughout soccer. Oh, yes, everyone remembers that song. Wait, how's it go again? Oh, yeah, uh, no one does. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, um, before we move on to, to the Montreal match, let's talk about the, the upcoming Mexico one real quick. So, with this result, and Mexico's stunning draw on the road at Honduras, dropping the two-goal lead. Does this look like a good sign for the U.S. to, to take a, even just a point at Azteca? Who wants to go first? Pat, go ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, gonna, it, it's certainly possible. Uh, it's certainly possible. I mean, I predicted on the other sh the show on um, that we did last week that they, they would get the one nothing win. Uh, it will be a little more difficult without Jermaine Jones on the field. I mean, Jermaine Jones is probably one of the best players on the field Friday night. And he could have been used in uh, at Azteca. Um, yeah, I, I mean, they're certainly vulnerable. They're also certainly going to be angry. So it's uh, which which emotions going to win out? You know, uh, the U.S. clearly had one of those games that really brings to get the team together. Um, so they're going to be coming in in great form, great uh, attitudes, and uh, it'll be interesting to see. I, I, I definitely think it's possible. Um, but uh, it might be a little. It might be a little. You know, might be a little frustrating uh, at the same time. That it, yeah. It, we'll see what happens. <laughs> I, I think they can get the point. They could get the three. Um, but but in the end, they they are still absolutely the underdog in this match. Yeah, for sure. I I would say the best result they could get is like a, a one-one draw, you know, or a scoreless draw. I think if Mexico scores two goals. I, I mean, you don't see the U.S., you know, coming back from that. Certainly if Mexico goes up 2-0 in this game, uh, the United States is not coming back yeah. in, in Mexico City. That's just not happening. Yeah. So yeah. if they could just hunker down for an entire game and try to steal a goal, I think that's the best result you could ask for. Saying that, you get the feeling they'll probably lose like 1-0 in this game. It's kind of my guess. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not really sure how they'll do it. I, I, I don't want to say they're going to lose just because I want to be optimistic for a change. <laughs> um, but, you know, the result last year at Aztec, granted that was a friendly, but that result combined with how Mexico has been the first two games of the Hex gives me uh, some optimism about this game, and especially with... Klinsman's undefeated record against Mexico, both as a player and a manager. It, I mean, now I, I know saying that probably jinxes it, so I'm sorry if they <laughs> if they end up losing. But a genius. Well, I'm I, in <laughs> fairness. I was not the first one to mention it. I just re-mentioned it, so I'm not the one that, that would originally ruin it. Anyway, um, so I, I have a good feeling. I don't think they'll win, but I think they'll sneak out with a with a draw. At least take a point. Um, and depending on how Honduras does, they could possibly be tied for... Actually, they wouldn't be tied because Honduras uh, won, but they would be top two at the table. Depend, actually, depending on how the other results uh, play out. Well, one, yeah. uh, another big positive is that, I mean, Altador and Dempsey are, are... They can't possibly be in more form than they are right now. You know, Altador has just been red hot in league play. 
and they're not going to be playing in a foot of snow. Yeah. <laughs> so with him and Dempsey, I mean, they keep clicking. Maybe we can, you know, sneak a couple goals in. I just it's going to be really, really hard. Uh, I think the only thing is maybe Mexico's not as good as everyone thinks they are. Yeah. That's about the most positive thing you can hope for is that they're just kind of slumping right now. Huh? I, I don't think that's the case, but, you know. Yeah, I mean, let's hope for a draw. I, like I said, I don't see it happening, but why the hell not, right? And one thing to consider as well is that uh, they are going to be missing their captain, Francisco Rodriguez. Uh, he's out due to yellow card accumulation, so... That's another thing going for the uh, the U.S. in this one. Um, so, yeah, it, 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 it'll be tough to see him win, but it is it's certainly it's certainly possible. All right, uh, shifting to the Red Bulls uh, on Saturday, New York goes north of the border to Montreal, drops a one nothing loss. Played at, in times like the better team, but just again. Like the DC match couldn't put in the back of the net. Uh, unfortunately, gave up one really bad counterattack to Montreal in the first half, with the back line specifically Pearson Holgerson not, or not sorry, not yeah Pearson Holgerson because uh, Alava was out this this week. Um, with them two not somehow communicating, uh, Marco Devaio getting in behind them and Robles getting hung out to dry, and just that that was it. It was over. Um, what were your Pat, we'll start with you. What were your thoughts on that match? And actually, did you even get a chance to see that on, on Saturday anyway? What's that? Did you get to get there? Yeah. Oh, no. I watched it. Yeah, did I you get a game. chance to see it? Okay. Yeah, I watched the game. Yeah. I got MLS, MLS Live, son. <laughs> All right. So, what were your thoughts on the uh, game? Uh, it was another frustrating match for the Red Bulls. Uh, much like all four of them have been, essentially. Uh, where I think. There are large periods of play where the Rebels were the better team. Um, Peggy, look, how the hell do you say his name? Peggy. Look, Peggy. <laughs> Peggy. I call him Peggy. 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 Yeah. I mean, he, he died. If he had, if he wasn't as rusty as he was, I mean, think of all those golden opportunities he had to put the ball in the net, and he didn't. You know, so it's. It's like the, there's a number of things. I mean, Luis Robles stood on his head a lot of times, got shots fired. I mean, made some a number of amazing saves. Um, it, it's one of those things like when this team is full, fully healthy, like if Henri was in that game, it could have been very different because he would have – I have more faith in him finishing some of those balls that just absolutely should have gone in the net. Um, and it, it's, it, it's one of the things to – I mean, that being said – Philadelphia now kind of essentially becomes a must-win because of this game, but uh, it's it, again, it's just more of more of the same frustrating. They couldn't finish the same thing that killed them in uh, in uh, against Washington at home. Um, but it's one of those things they think will f- correct itself eventually. Yeah, it's kind of hard when you know you're missing Henri, you're missing Cahill. I had no idea Olave wasn't playing until that day. Yeah, same here. You know, I that totally caught me off guard. Maybe I wasn't reading the Twitter feeds enough or just not reading the news. I, I didn't see anything about that happening. And So yet again, you had to kind of switch up the defense a little bit. They made several just bad gaffes. Uh, uh, you know, thankfully only one cost them a goal. Unfortunately, they couldn't recover from that one goal. You know, so it's tough because then again, you know, you're, you're mixing around the defense again. You didn't have Cahill. You didn't have Honoré. You have Piggy, uh, uh, you know, who hasn't <laughs> played in quite a while, played his first game away. You're throwing him into pretty much the lead striker role. I mean, he's playing the Thierry Henry spot. That's a, that's a lot to contend with. Mm-hmm. You know, then going up to Montreal and playing it's a team that's been pretty stingy so far. And, you know, again, yeah, they had it. They had it several really good chances and they could capitalize on it. But we talked about this uh, after the DC game. You know, we did the little live little live podcast. Was any of us going to panic if they lost this game? And I think we all said no. I think we all said absolutely not. It's not going to be time, panic time yet. Um, come on. Three road games out of the first four games of the year. That's mm-hmm. tough. That's tough. And 
you're gonna I'm gonna think that the schedule is gonna eventually it's gonna even itself out. And here's the perfect opportunity coming up is Philly. You know, here's the opportunity to kind of get things back on track and your players will be back. And um, Roy Miller hopefully proved yet again that he's Roy Miller. Roy Miller and Roy Millering in the USA <laughs> Costa Rica game. That <laughs> won't be him. Yeah. You know, because Roy Miller yet again was a hero for, you know, our team. Uh, we, I guess we, we failed to bring up earlier. So, you know, I'm sure he'll be hanging out in the locker room again for the Philly game. So, yeah, not panic time, but definitely the results have to come this Saturday, for sure. Yeah, I agree with you to all that, so I'm not really going to add anything. Um, if we do our likes and dislikes, uh, predictions, I let's see, myself, Truman, and Pete had all called this as a win, so we got it wrong. Uh, Zach called it 2 nothing loss, Kevin a 3-1 loss, and Pat gets it completely correct with a one nothing loss. Bravo. So our predict. The, the amazing thing is our third completely correct score in only the fourth week of the season. It took us like halfway through the year to get a correct score last last year. That's um, funny. yeah. Um, prediction standings. Uh, Kevin's at the bottom with one point since he just joined. Uh, Truman, Craig, and Pete tied with two points. I am at three, and Zach and uh, Pat are tied for five, with tied for first with five points. All right, so uh, like and dislike, and um, let's Pat. Uh, why don't you start off us off with your dislike of this game? Uh, you know, I, I said already that the Red Bulls finishing ability right now it's just it's really lacking. Um, if they've had blown way too many chances, uh, they should have more points right now. They should have won in DC. They very well could have made, if they had put more. Shots in good positions. Uh, they could have won on Saturday. So it's it's the finishing ability at the moment, which is just really poor. And um, a, a, again, it's one of those things I think will correct itself. But um, y- you know, it's yeah. For now, it's the finishing ability. I'm gonna go with the Red Bull sleepy time defense, <laughs> which is what we saw a lot of last year, where you know, the team, the the opposing team. It's not like they build up to a goal. It's like, oh, boom, they scored out of nowhere. And that's exactly what this was. And it almost almost happened, like we said, a couple more times in that game. Wake up. Seriously, just wake up and pay attention to what's going on because other teams, better teams, will probably finish all of those chances when you give them, you know, when you're just taking a nap, playing that high line on defense, and all of a sudden, oh, they're behind you and they scored. You know, you you can't... Stop letting that happen for crying out loud. <laughs> uh, my dislike is <clears throat> it's kind of two parts, but they're kind of related. Um, Brandon Barklage in this match ended up getting two yellow cards, so he is out for the Philadelphia match, which probably means Roy Miller's coming into that game because no. fuck us, that's just how that's just going to happen. Anyway. Well, get, get I, Kimura. Who, you'll probably play Kamara, I think. Kamara will play. Yeah, you you could put money we, on. We that. can. I I can only hope at this point. But anyway, um, up until Montreal got a card in the 85th minute of this game, New York had picked up nine straight yellow cards, with the options of getting zero. That date that dates back to the San Jose match. Uh, the stat is courtesy of Dan Dickinson, by the way. I did not. He's one that pointed out after uh, Barclage's second yellow card, which was the eighth in a row, and then Alexander had added it in the uh, 81st minute to make it nine. So since Wondolowski got his yellow card in the San Jose match, even though the opponents have been more physical than us, we have gotten more cards. Wow. Gotta love that MLS refereeing right now. That is a crazy we, we, statistic. I mean, right we, said, we said in D.C., how many times does a person need to bear hug a player to get a card. Apparently as many as they want, because... Oh, yeah, that was completely no. out of control. All right, wow, so crazy. let's try... Yeah. So let's try to take a positive out of this game. Uh, what did you guys like? I thought the midfield played a lot better. I thought they moved the ball around a little bit better than um, the previous games. And I'm just kind of hoping that that's a sign of things to come. Uh, minus, you know, vengeful Johnny Steele, just being vengeful. 
<laughs> aside from that little gap there. I, I did think they were they were able to distribute a little more, and maybe with the full healthy lineup and Thierry Henry coming back Saturday, that's going to definitely create a lot more goal scoring chances. So, improve defense, uh, improve midfields. I think on both sides of the ball, that's my like. Yeah, um, I'm gonna you know go with uh, Luis Robles. Uh, I thought he had a really good game. Um, I think it. Many ways could have been worse. Too. There were a lot of shots that, you know, because the defense just played like total garbage that went in that never should have, and he uh, he took care of them. So uh, for now, yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to go for uh, Robles gets my uh, like of the game. Um, pretty much. I mean, I don't know if it's uh, he he hasn't been bad per se, but I don't know if bringing in Kevin Hartman kind of lit an extra bit of little, little extra flame under him. But uh, yeah, he was really good the other night. And it was funny too when. Uh, when they gave up the goal, I can't tell you how many people on Twitter were like, Robles has to make that save. Are you kidding me? Yeah, get out of guy. here. If he's going to make a save, it's going to be a hell of a save. I mean, yeah, give exactly. the guy a break. What do you want him to do? They got the yeah, they got behind the defense. Yeah, it's like, I think some people don't remember, like, how, I mean, they're probably the same people who thought Pegui was, the, they were like, oh, he's the best player on the field. I'm like, what, the guy who, who couldn't put anything in the net? I mean, give me a right. break. It's like yeah. it's like people forget how big the goal is in soccer, and it's pretty much advantageous to the uh, offensive player, when it's, especially when it's one on one. Yeah, seriously, enough, enough with this freaking armchair goaltender. I guess that's what you would call it, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna differ a little bit here. Not, I'm not completely blaming Robles. I mean, his defense did leave him out to dry. But if you watch the replay, he did get his hand on it. So he probably could have done more. I'm not saying he deserves all the blame. I'm just saying he could have probably done a little bit better. Maybe actually stopped it. So that's just my little opinion on that part. Um, my like of the match, it's sad to say, was probably the Shep Unleashed segment. <laughs> just because of <laughs> <laughs> how poor it was on the field. Granted, I didn't get to see the whole thing because MLS Live was a little weird, but um, I did see him make the comments and basically, uh, not basically, but he did call Chivas USA racist for the type of players that they are trying to bring in, which is basically those of um, Lat Latino descent. And I kind of agree with him. I'm not calling Chivas racist. I don't want to go that far. But um, my complaint with Chivas anyway is how they run the team because they basically run it as a feeder team for Guadalajara and I think that's wrong but I just like the fact that Shep, I mean, don't get me wrong, Shep is outspoken all the time, and we all know that but the fact that he was outspoken about this is something that in my mind is a really good thing he did maybe it'll actually bring some light to the situation now yeah, and you know what, when, when Chivas first came into the league, that's how they created the roster in the first place is they wanted to have that strong Mexican uh, base of players. And it was a complete and total failure. And they realized they had to kind of get away from that. And let's face it, they didn't really get that much better. But what do they think going back to it's going to improve things and they're going to bring people in? Because that ain't happening. Yeah. <laughs> I think less and less people are showing up. Yeah, I think the attendance of the first ever me the first match this year was like, a, a reported attendance was like 7,000. Yeah, there was but like if you look at any of those, yeah, if you look at any of those pictures, there's nowhere close to seven thousand. That's no. that's that you know tickets sold is equal to ten to attendance math we always hear about. Yeah. All right, so before we, all right, so for um, Red Bull Fantasy League, top three remains unchanged. Uh, still nil nil FC Ironbound and Mazel Bug Dev United. Not going to read the points off for them because they haven't changed. Truman, you moved up to 13th, 195 Ooh. points. And I moved up to 10th, uh, 206 points. And hey, Pat, where are you at this point, <laughs> Pat, where, how you doing? How you doing in the fantasy league? Um, I'm letting you guys all get a nice, comfortable lead before I come into this <laughs> league and uh, just tear it up. <laughs> all right, so before we get to preview the Philly match, uh, let's do some listener mail. First, we have an email from, and I'm sorry if I'm going to mispronounce your last name, Manny 
or Atlanta. Hopefully I said that right. If not, I'm sorry. And he says, Disappointed is how I feel about the Montreal game. Robles was solid in goal and kept it from being worse than 1-0. Our defense isn't the same without Olave in the center. Holgerson played like he didn't want to be there. Espindola kept diving every chance he could. I was happy to see that Luinda played well and seemed to be close to game shape. He played well and was a great pickup. The game shows how weak they are without Henri and Cahill, how the team doesn't respond well without those two there, even with Juninho leading the way. He needs those two to keep the focus off of him. I think that pretty much sums up everything we've said so far. Absolutely. <laughs> so I'm not mistaken. The defense isn't the same with Olave because we saw how good they were in the previous game. I mean, that they were so good. I wouldn't say that Holgerson played like he didn't want to be there. I mean, no player is going to get on the field and then play like that. Yeah. You know, but like I, it was it was the case of sleepy time defense. That's all. That's all it was. Yeah, I think I think Holgerson can. I mean, we saw it last year. He can bounce back from this game, and probably pairing him with Olave is ha- is what'll do it. Um, Hey, one thing about him mentioning Janino. How about Janino like hating on his uh, teammates for like a good portion of that game? Hey, I mean, yet again, you have a guy who's an absolute proven winner. Mm-hmm. He does. He's just like Thierry Henry, where he doesn't want to come here and lose. That and that's the kind of personality you got to have. You know, hey, give give the players shit when they're playing like shit. Mm. That I mean, those are the kind of guys that I want. Those are the kind of guys you know get pissed off. Yeah. All right, our next email is from uh, Joe Stevens. Hi guys, I'm a first time emailer and a huge, in all caps, USA Red Bulls fan. I just moved to Brooklyn after spending most of my childhood life in Denver. I was super pissed I missed the snow game. Boy, it looked like fun. Where I wouldn't have, where I wouldn't give to get in a snowball fight with Alexi Lawless. Ha. Um, guess you didn't do that. Pat, I'm guess you uh, weren't close enough to do that, were you? Uh, I was close enough. I could have thrown a snowball to Alexi, but. We do want him back on the show, so I decided <laughs> against it. <laughs> anyway, just wanted to give get your thoughts, opinions on a few items I've been thinking about. Number one, should I splurge and get tickets for the Red Bulls? Or, I'm sorry, season tickets for the Red Bulls. I know it's pricey, but I'd like to have a shot at playoff tickets without worrying about getting left out. All right, before we go any farther, one, they're not really that pricey, and two, you're not going to need to get season tickets to get playoff tickets. Trust no, me. No, I think they've proved that that is not a problem. <laughs> yeah, you should you should be fine there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do you think they have a shot at winning the title this year? I'm going to guess none of us will say yes to that right now. Wait, what? I, I, do they have a shot at winning the title this year? All right, should want me to break that question down right there? I, I'm... Yeah, I'm pretty sure I was going to say no to that right now. I'm not going to say no. I, I said this early in the year. If they get off, they're going to get off to a slow start, and all all that matters is getting hot at the end. I think they absolutely have a chance to win the title. Do I think they will? Well, I've been rooting for this team since the beginning, so I'm going to say no. But do they have a shot? <laughs> they absolutely have a shot. I am totally fine with a slow start and a hot finish. Look at Los Angeles last year. I mean, they were dreadful to start the season. You get hot at the right time, you go all the way to the title game. So, I do they have a shot? Yes, yes, of course they do. There's too much talent not to have a shot at winning the title. I, I agree. I mean, they have as good a shot as anybody else in the league at this point. I, I mean, I think a lot of us thought, you know, again, going to the slow start, a lot of us thought they were going to start 0-4. I mean, they do actually have two points. That's not exactly something to go nuts about, but, you know, it's... Uh, yeah, I think it, and just like you said, LA started out really crappy and um, came around and uh, really turned it around. So, absolutely, there's too much talent on this team. I don't think they're going to be in this position the entire season. And I think Petke's going to learn. He's going to learn fast. And you know what? For somebody who has no head coaching experience, he's actually done an okay job. Yeah, for sure. I guess that was just my pessimistic New York Jets side coming out. So, sorry about that. Yeah, see? All right. All right, but Joe says, uh, my heart says yes, my mind says don't be so silly. Anyway, I guess I'm just looking for an expert opinion, which I don't think we're experts, but thank you no, very I much, Joe. He, he went to the show for <laughs> experts, <so> thank you. <laughs> you know this isn't seeing red, right, Joe? <laughs> uh, any insight would be great. Thank you. Well, we did that already. Anyway, number two, U.S. soccer. 
I think Coach K isn't the answer, and the U.S. will rule the day they let Bob Bradley go. This team can't even beat teams like Honduras on a regular basis. A huge game in Mexico is looming. What if we lose? Will that end our World Cup chances? Am I just crazy for thinking that maybe we just aren't a soccer country? Or am I, or should I just keep my hope that we are almost there? <laughs> wow. That's, yeah, that's just a lot of questions <laughs> in there. <laughs> no, Joe, are you the only person who wasn't heartened by that game against Costa Rica? <laughs> I think the entire country was so excited for the team and for the sport after that game on Friday. Oh, man, dude. I feel bad for you. Go go have a beer. Go, you know, cheer up or something, bro. No, I, I, um, I, I think I think Klinsman, um, he's as much a coach for the future as he is a coach for right now. Uh, so I do think for what they want to accomplish, which is becoming... Uh, one of the top ten teams in the world. Wins the guy. We couldn't stick with Bradley and be that defending. And don't get me wrong, Brad- Bradley and Bruce Arena, for that matter, before them, both had tremendous runs as coaches. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. I don't want to belittle their um, time as the coach. Uh, but I think Klinsman is trying to push this team to the next level. And for that, they got to get out of the defending counter mentality. And uh, even if it means growing some severe growing pains, such as losing to Honduras. Um, Losing in Mexico will not end our World Cup chances whatsoever because uh, that was chalked up as a loss to begin with, uh, no matter what. Uh, So if we get a point, it would be a huge victory. Um, And as for soccer country, it's come. I mean, soccer bars are popping up left and right. Uh, If you were in Denver and you just... uh, I mean, I met people from around the country who came in for that game. Um... It's growing, it, and it really is growing, and I, I personally think in the next couple of years it's at least going to overtake hockey in popularity in this country. Um, I have a buddy who thinks as soon as, you know, the NFL's uh, watered down to become a giant pillow fight, uh, soccer will really take off. He's very possibly right. Um, but, yeah, no, we're, we're – keep the hope, bro. We're, we're almost there. Um, I mean, I'm not saying we're almost there. We're, we're not almost Spain, but, you know, we're – we're absolutely growing, and uh, Honduras is just a growing pain, and that's all it was. Uh, and I think it's you know, we're, we're getting there slowly but surely. We're getting there. You know, when it comes to Klinsman, you hit it right on the head. He's a guy to build for the future, and he's helping build the youth system. And that's yeah, I mean that's so important. That's something that this country really hasn't done in the past several years, and. If you want to be good every year, that's what you have to do. You have to keep bringing the talent in. You can't just hope that, oh, we're going to have, you know, four years of we're going to have these guys that are really talented, but after that, who knows? Yep. Th- this is the way you improve a country, you know, their, their playing skills. Is, yeah, you have that developmental system around the country. You keep bringing the players in, keep bringing them in over and over and over again so you can be consistently good. As for right now, who knows? I mean, this team's, I think, kind of... It's it's in a weird spot right now. You have a lot of the good players are starting to fade out. There's a lot of young guys coming in. So don't let's not judge this year's World Cup as to where the U.S. soccer will go into the future. Um, I think this team could go either way. As for being a soccer country, does anyone remember what MLS was like when it first started? No, because I didn't even watch. <laughs> and there you go. I mean, you just proved the point. Mm-hmm. Same here. You know? <laughs> exactly. And do, 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 does everyone remember where the teams were playing? You know, the Metro Stars were playing in Giant Stadium. The Wizards were playing in the freaking Kansas City, you know, an Arrowhead Stadium. And then a minor league baseball park. Pretty much in the same place they're playing now, and that's a football stadium. But, you know, everyone was playing, ex- except for Columbus, you know, early on. Everyone was playing in borrowed stadiums. Everyone was renting space renting time in NFL stadiums. Uh-huh. Look at it now. Look at, look at the way that it's changed. Look at how popular the game has grown in places where you wouldn't expect it. You know, hey, they thought Florida was going to be the big soccer hotbed. They were right. completely wrong. Look where it is, the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. I'm sure they never would have thought when the league first started, hey, Portland and Seattle, that's going to be the place where we should put teams. And, you know, look at them. Everyone, almost everyone's playing in soccer-specific stadiums. That, this is only, we're only talking the beginning of MLS, 1996. 
Okay. You know, it's it's amazing. We haven't we haven't even hit 20 years in Major League Soccer. Why why don't we give it another 20 years and really see where the league has come? And at that point, yeah, it could absolutely overpass the NHL. Yeah. And one thing about the right. NHL is like what they only had six teams for how many years? Oh yeah. my God, forever for 50 years. You yeah. know, 50, 60 years. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I wanted to actually go back to your point that you made that was really good about you know Klinsman being a coach for the future in the U team. I mean, anybody who watched that U-20, CONCACAF U-20 championship with the U.S. really went toe-to-toe with Mexico. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was, and that, it was the coming out party for Luis Gill, who is a central attacking midfielder, something we've been wanting forever. And he's only, he's not even 20 years old. And same with Ho- Jose Valeriel. Um, but uh, did you guys, by the way, speaking of that, did you guys see their draw uh, for the U-20 World Cup? I did not. They got it was uh, Spain, Spain, France, and a team from Africa, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it's Yikes. a group of death. <laughs> so, so that, that'll be another measure. Uh, when, that, when that starts in June, we can all take a look at that, and we can uh, revisit this issue, especially about the growth of youth. Yeah. My, okay, I'm going to make one point, and then we'll move on. To understand how soccer is growing in this country, not even... Actually, today there's not even a lot of these, but not even five years ago... Was there a true academy system in this country? Mm-hmm. The academy system in this country, up until like the last two years maybe, has been travel teams and or academies where you had to pay to play in the academy system. Mm-hmm. It's only recently that teams are really starting to open up academies, wh- like true European academies, where mm-hmm. nobody has to pay to get in. The players get stipends, the players get all, you know, all the gear and stuff. When that kind of system starts taking hold in this country, that's how you know soccer's growing. And we're just starting to see that now. And with Klinsman, um, in hit the article by uh, Brian Strauss, he said that his main goal, and it sounds terrible to say it this way, but his main goal wasn't to win a World Cup. His main goal was to change the culture in this country to make soccer, to, provi- uh, to produce better soccer players in this country. I mean, look at the... Right, right now, you look at colleges... Um, college football is the biggest not only um, expense of money for college sports it's also bringing in the most money because it's just so popular at the moment in professional leagues I mean in this country we have a history of going through cycles you know back in the early 1900s it was horse racing then baseball then boxing. you know, I mean, baseball is a, yeah, boxing came around like the, in the twenties and the, the Great Depression. Then football came around around you know the fifties and sixties. Uh, baseball had a little bit of resurgence in the eighties. In the nineties, it became about uh, hockey and basketball, and then all of a sudden, the two thousands is back to football. So I mean, this country goes through cycles. The only thing is that we haven't had a consistent top tier league in this country. We are now past the point of the NASL collapse of 17 years. Once this year, once this year is done, we will have the longest running top prof- or top soccer league in this nation. Like Truman said, let's give it an extra another 20 years. But the fact that we're at this point, especially when the league had contraction at, in the early 2000s, to to say the financial um, portion of the, the business, they went down to what I think it was. Uh, six or eight teams at that point and now we're back up to 19 mm-hmm. I mean it, it, it's it's hard for a league to come in to, and this is a purely American um, problem no other soccer country no other soccer league in the world has to deal with three other or four other sports that mm-hmm. already have a foothold and take up the most amount of t- 100% of the sports media time yeah, because nearly so, every I mean, other country, but, soccer is the sport. Mm-hmm. You know, and it has been the sport for a hundred years. Not not even, you know, figuratively. Literally a hundred years these teams have been established. But, I mean, and, even look at countries like Japan and Australia, where the leagues are roughly as old as um, MLS. They're growing. I mean, Australia is not at where MLS is, but the J-League... Oh, man, they're taking it really serious over there, and they've been a baseball country forever. Mm-hmm. Yep. And soccer is getting a foothold. Uh, in Australia, they have rugby and they have the AFL. 
and soccer's getting a foothold. I mean, I think I can't remember the team off the top of my head, but there's one team that they came in and immediately the top of the league. I mean, granted, it's kind of a bad example, but it's and it's hard to watch them because it's Australia and the time difference. But the quality of soccer in Australia isn't that far behind MLS. So I mean, it, it's one of those things where in America we're in a unique situation because of all the other professional sports leagues. And we have to compete for not only market share in terms of getting butts in the seats, but also for media TV or media time, because that is really what drives attendance is media time. And until NBC came along, we didn't really get that. We had a few flashes on ESPN, we had a few flashes on Fox Soccer, but nobody watched Fox Soccer because the only people that were watching that were soccer geeks. Right. Yep. <laughs> so, I, I mean, think, yeah, I think we, again it, we can say NBC's been really. Yeah. Doing the sport very well with pre-game, post-game coverage. You know, it's nice to see that they're really dedicating time, putting into it, not just kind of like ESPN, where you're praying the little league baseball game doesn't go into extra innings, or you're not <laughs> going to see kickoffs, or the college women's basketball game, right, or every other sport that's been out <laughs> which, which, I, I which thought, almost I happened. Of, I was kind of convinced that the pre-taped. Uh, college gymnastics event was going to go into extra time before the one Red Bulls game. I, uh, I remember that, that one. one. Yeah, that was a good one too. <laughs> you know, that was it was a pre-taped uh. Arkansas Alabama gymnastics, and I was a little worried. I got to tell you. Um, yeah, one just you know final quick point about the the growth of the sport. Uh, if you haven't watched the Kick TV hexagonal review of Costa Rica, watch it. It's really awesome. But there's one point where Marcelo Balboa says. Um, he says, you know, I remember the 1990 World Cup where there was that small corner of the stadium that had their f- the players' families and maybe a hundred other fans. Um, I, before going to the match in Denver, I've been to, I think, five other U.S. soccer matches. The match in Denver is the first one I can say that was 100% totally pro-United States. Every other match I've been to, it was either questionable as to which side, or it was definitely the other way around. Um, so, you know, it is, and, and like, and that was another thing about the game in Denver, it was the largest gathering of American Outlaws supporters group ever. Um, so, yeah, it, it's coming around, it's growing, give it a little more time, um, we'll get there. We'll get there in our lifetime. <laughs> and and I, I would like to finish this off with Manny and Joe, thank you for emailing us and giving us stuff to prattle on about for about 20 minutes. Cause, yeah. Yeah. I love it. Please, guys, <laughs> keep writing thing. in. Keep writing in. I was just about to say the same thing. I was like, oh, thanks, guys. You can let us go on our tangent for, like, forever. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> guys, don't, don't ever be afraid to email us and, and bring up whatever topic you want to because it, it certainly makes our discussions a lot more fun. Mm. Or, or, for that matter, call us. Like, our first voicemail of the evening... Uh, we got this one off of Skype, so it's our first Skype voicemail. Uh, it's Julian from England. This is Julian, New York Red Bulls, London Supporters Club, chief member. Just calling to say there's hope for the boys yet. All the games that we've played so far, we haven't been outplayed. We just look like a bunch of twats at times. <laughs> our defence ain't the best at the minute, but we can play and hold our own against all the teams we played against. Although we lost against Montreal last night, we weren't beaten. We were, we just lost the game, if that makes sense. We're playing some nice moves, some nice passes. We just need to solidify, and we just need to find a way to score goals. And once we score goals, keep pushing forward and get more goals. I believe in Pete Key, and I believe in this team. In time, we'll, uh, we'll come good. I just think people don't need, at the moment, to start knocking the manager and knocking the players. All right, be constructively critical, but let's just hold it together. Pecky wants everybody to pull together as, a, as an army, and that's what we need to do. Anyway, the New York Red Bulls London Supporters Club is signing off now. I gotta admit, that was awesome here. I gotta admit, that was awesome here for you, Julian. I mean, we we've only heard from one other person across uh, across the pond so far, so that's it's really it's really nice to be able to take time out to call us, even though it was only for a minute. So thank you for calling in. <clears throat> so what, what do you guys think of what he said? I mean, I, we kind of discussed already, but... Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's, he's spot on with what we were just talking about. It's not time to panic. It's not time to freak out. He, he had it right. We lost, but we weren't outplayed by any means. Eventually, yeah, I, the results are going to turn around. 
I think yeah, I agree. I think you hit every every t- uh, point and topic right on on the head. It was yeah. I, I pretty much agreed with everything you said. All right, our second and last voicemail is from a very special person in the Rebels organization. Let's give this a listen. Uh, finally, there is class amongst the Americans. Yes, indeed. I've been waiting for this moment for years as owner of Red Bull. The Austrian overlord, if you will. I, Dietrich Mudechitz, I'm very proud at this very moment. So very, very proud. Mm, yes, quite proud indeed that Red Bull Ranch has brought to this team a little bit of class. Indeed, as I sip away on my Cabernet Sauvignon with a twist of Red Bull, of course. I think back to my younger days where class, civility, indeed, was the only way to live. Yes, I would throw down my jacket, of course, a Red Bull jacket, yes, if you will. Put it on the floor where there is puddles and wonderful young maidens would walk upon it as I held hands, making sure their little bootlings were not dirtied, sullied, if you will, by the muddy floors. I, Dietrich, am quite a ladies' man, let me tell you. And this classy Red Bull rant has finally bought the filth that is American culture to a new level. Yes, indeed, I recommend that you continue these types of shows. Yes, indeed, please continue. I will be smoking a cigar by the fireplace and yes, awaiting the next installment of the Red Bull Red. This is Dietrich Muteschitz. I'm very proud for once of you filthy Americans. What the fuck's he talking about? Did I miss something? <laughs> I, I, I can only hope that Dietrich only listened to last week's episode and will never listen to another episode. That <laughs> <laughs> just insulted him with this one. But hey, who else has the great Red Bull Overlord calling in their podcast? So I don't see that happening red. on CN Red, do you? I, I don't. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> just saying. Yeah. All right, so thank you, Dietrich, for calling in and paying us for that very wonderful compliment. <laughs> so let's, let's move on to talk about the upcoming match against Philadelphia. Saturday, 3.30 start time on NBC Sports. I will be in attendance at this game, although I will be with certain, with some people, so I won't be in the South Ward this time. <clears throat> Are you guys going to be able to make it? I will be sadly working, but I will be watching. I'm uh, Yeah, I'm keeping my eye on stuff. I'm trying to round up a couple buddies and uh, head out there. I, I might just, I mean, if you're going to be there, I might just go solo. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about our predictions uh, for this match. Uh, we have not asked any other writers for their predictions yet, so unfortunately I cannot give you those. But, Pat, kick us off. What do you think is going to happen on Saturday? Um, you know, I think uh, there's going to be a nice little infusion by the return of uh, Cahill. I assume Monry's coming back? I, I haven't followed that. Has anyone heard anything on that? My guess would be yes. That would be my guess. Yeah. Play. So I, I assume that's going to help a lot. Um Philly is not terrible at the moment, but, you know, I'm not impressed. Uh, I don't see, you know, good old Sebastian Lutte, you know, making a good return and teaching us a lesson or anything like that. Um, Philly's always kind of been our bitch anyway, so, especially at home, so I'm uh, going to go with a... I'm not going to go with Gold Palooza, but I'm going to go with a 2 nothing win for the Red Bulls. I also think the pairing of Alave and Holgerson again should uh, help settle down the defense. I'm thinking a 2-1 win. I think definitely they're they're going to... I think now, you know, we talk about it's not time to panic, but come on. You're playing Philly at home, you got to win this game, right? There's really no excuses. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't, I don't care that, that Philly's got two wins. Who, who gives a shit? I, I, I don't care. I, I like the way this team's been playing. They played pretty well, being very shorthanded last week. Yeah, you get a lobby back in the center with Holgerson. You're going to put uh, the Kamura lock, you know, in, in uh, Barklidge's place. <laughs> Pierce will be back out where he belongs, in the left. And you're going to have a little bit more options on the bench with, you know, him being on the team. 
TV. I de- I listen. You can't lose this game. You just can't. It's Philly. You're home. Got to win. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say two to one. Yeah, I think I think when you talk about must win, I mean it. I mean it's, I know it's crazy, but it's like if they don't win this one. Even though I wouldn't be behind it, I mean, there's going to be people. There are absolutely going to be people who start murmuring about Petkey. Right, the torches will be out. Yeah. Uh, you know, not justifiably, but you know, that's okay. the way fans are. Especially New York fans who can't who have been waiting so long for <laughs> for anything to happen. So right. And um, hey, uh, I should add this. Listen, the Yankees and Mets are going to suck this year, so I think the Red Bulls are the best chance we got for a nice, you know, summer fall title. <laughs> I think we could all agree on that. It's going to be a bad <laughs> baseball season. So listen, Red Bulls, come on. Now's the time to get the push on. I also believe that New York will win this game. They are 3-0 and at home against Philadelphia. And they went 3-0 and last year in all matches. So they, at this point, have Philly's number. Sebastian LePieu... <laughs> not gonna, not yeah. Uh, I don't think it's gonna score. I'm gonna go with a one nothing win though. It's gonna be a tight one, but I think we'll see the same defensive effort we saw from DC, where we it will be the, the defense that we know this team can be. Um, without Barclays in this case, since he stupidly picked up red card, right, second yellow card, but that's besides the point. So yeah, I think they'll make good on their third or no, sorry. Fourth national TV appearance in the first five games and finally yeah, pick up uh, their first win. Unbelievable, isn't it? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> that is nuts. And what an insane fan schedule I, I, for this team. I, I think we have 14 or 15 national broadcasts this year. Yeah. So, yeah. I know, I know ESPN's uh, coming out at some point soon. Yeah. Also hilarious that, you know, we still haven't had a nice 7 o'clock game yet. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? At, at least this one's not twelve thirty, though. No, no, fans will will be able to actually fill up before the game starts. Yeah. All right. Do we do you guys have any last topic we want to discuss before we uh, close this one out? Um, I think we covered everything. I think we have. Oh, and hey, let me add to this. You know, looking at the schedule. They got a, they got two road games in a row coming up after this. Oh, good grief! At Chicago, at DC. So yeah, fucking win this game. <laughs> and then my final thought, I guess, would be: uh, Is Johnny Steele actually a Jason Statham character in disguise? Don't you wish I was? <laughs> yeah. That's What's that name. <laughs> I'm the transport. I transport soccer balls all over the field. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's my best chance to save them. That's all I have. And he, he just can't transport them in the goal, though. <laughs> transport them all over the field, right to the net. So crank up the level of my game. Get it? Crank up. Crank. Get it? Yeah. <laughs> Snatch the ball. Get it? Yeah. Snatch that ball. If you don't get out of my way, I'm going to transport my fist into your throat. <laughs> I'm going to come in four ball lock, stock, and two smoking barrels. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> In the name of the king, we're going to win this game. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, man. You went I think, I, I, think I ran out of Jason Statham. <laughs> and the show has reached a new low. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, all right, so to wrap up, visit our website at redbullrant.wordpress.com. You can email us like Joe and Manny did at redbullrant at gmail.com you can call us like Dietrich did at 973-348-5329 you can call us on Skype like Julian did at Red Bull Rant, all one word Facebook, facebook.com slash redbullrant we are also on Google Plus and Storify on Twitter our show's handle is at redbullrant mine's at Dr. Stooge Pat's at pmacd82 and Truman's at the Truman and as always you can subscribe to us via iTunes or Stitcher Radio and a uh, quick note about that, um, we decided that, at least for the time being, we're not going to release a video version after the, st- after the fact, only because the video version would just be still images, and we figured it wasn't really worth it for everybody. No, no. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so if you're subscribed to that, we're not going to be updating that feed for a while until we get some true audio at whatever point that ends up being. Um, the last thing before we go, our guest for next week, big time guest, Mr. Oh. Jimmy Conrad of Kick TV, will be on our show. So make sure to tune in. That will be Thursday, April 4th, 10 p.m., ustream.tv slash channel slash Red Bull Rant. Thank you, Dave Martinez, for predicting Jimmy Conrad who was going to come on our show. I don't know how he did it, but he did it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, so any last, thing to, any last thing to say before we go? All right, well, I personally don't, but I know someone who does. Hey, this is Jason Statham. Listen, all I have to say is one thing. Win, you fuckers, win. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I got nothing after that. <laughs> 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 all right, so for all of us here at the Red Bull Rant, this was episode number 51. Thank you for tuning in, and as always, go Red Bulls. Peace. Peace. <laughs>